Welcome back to my flooded home on 4th Avenue in Northwest Minot. It's been more than a year now since the first round of evacuations where my family left and never moved back home. We all know what happened then at the end of June. More than 11 feet of water filled my street and caused roughly $130,000 in damage to my house. Since then, with the help of family and some very dedicated friends, the home was gutted, cleaned, sanitized, and sealed up for the winter, waiting for a flood control plan to be approved. And that's where we last left off. When the Ramstead Loop was spared and the cold weather gave way to spring, we went back to work. And that left us with even more challenges ahead. First, the money. An SBA loan was an option to begin with, but with a second mortgage being too much burden for my family to financially bear and an unfortunate runaround game from the SBA to begin with, it turned into an option out. So with the FEMA money that we saved by doing all of the work ourselves last fall, the $30,000 from the Bank of North Dakota, the Home Rebuilders Loan, a tax refund, and the $2,000 from the Recovery Fund, that left us with about $67,000 to get everything rebuilt. And that means doing nearly all of the work ourselves with one available time that we have on nights, weekends, and vacation days. With a home that's over 80 years old, that means fixing carpentry work that wasn't done exactly right when it was built. Like the stringer, the substructure of a staircase that wasn't used when it was built. Instead, the stairs were routered into the baseboard molding. Sections of the rafters were cut to install ductwork years ago, and then there was just the rot from aged and flooded wood. In all, the subfloor had to be relayed, walls have to be rebuilt, heating and air conditioning has to be installed, wiring, plumbing, the bathroom stool, the shower, vanity, and sink have to be roughed in and installed, and then comes the sheetrock, the taping, the texturing, the paint, the flooring, the kitchen cabinets, the sink, and all of the finishing work, including the light fixtures, to bring back the character of this Victorian-style house, and none of it comes cheap. All said and done, we're hoping to be back into our mostly rebuilt home by Christmas, roughly a year and a half after the house was flooded. And none of this includes a fence, yard, numerous shrubs and trees, or the exterior stucco patches and paint. When my family does finally return to this neighborhood, it will be to one that has undergone not only physical, but demographic changes as well. Only four or five of my neighbors are rebuilding. The rest are now owned by contractors. This story really wasn't meant to be a feel-good story, but more of one that's a reality check. At my flooded house, Sean Sipma, KX News.